morning. Good morning. Have you ever been to Sequoia? Uh, Really good to welcome you to worship with a cup of tea afterwards. There's some half day cake. There's all sorts of I was going to be there, that's good. You do. They took the advice. Um, really good to welcome you to worship. Happy New Year. Happy New Year. Yes, it is. It is, we're in. Um, featuring in the New Year are flowers, beautiful flowers again um, for worship today. But Jenny's running out of bowls to put them in. So if you have any of these harboured away anywhere, um, Jenny would be very grateful. So Jenny, I'm going to put this one down here. Right, thank you. There you go. I think most of what you need to know is in the newsletter. There's cafe on Friday, um, prayer breakfast at 8 o'clock, um, cafe 10.45. Um, we're looking forward to that. Um, it would be nice just to get back in. Uh, let me look at the song today. Let's see if the song is on Tuesday. Hopefully. Hopefully. So, in theory, there's a songsters on Tuesday. We're looking forward to that as well. Look at the sincerity. I want to welcome Andrew Allison. It's really good to welcome you to worship again today. Uncle Alex, good to see you in worship today as well. Um, Portsmouth haven't got a meeting today. Um, neither have Shirley, so Ruth. Uh, Joan and Arthur, it's good to welcome you to worship with us today as well. Uh, just to bring you kind of right up to date as of yesterday, um, Alan England, of course, isn't home from hospital yet. We're hoping um, towards the end of this week um, he might make it home. Just getting a few things in place and sorted for him. So continue to remember Alan in your prayers. A bit anxious about coming home and being on his own after such a long stay in hospital. So remember our new prayers and Jane and Darren as well um, as, as they make those arrangements to look after. Matt, it's really good to welcome you to worship. It's a new year and uh, we're looking forward to sharing with you too today. So here you are. Good morning. Good morning. It's good to be able to welcome you to worship and to wish you all a happy new year. I'd like to start today by saying thank you. Thank you to everyone who's contributed so much over the last five weeks to our different Advents and Christmas activities. To Brian and his team for all of the decorations and work that has gone into the festival of trees that they're still able to enjoy and the grotto. To Stephen and all those who've been involved in catering and offering hospitality and a welcome to the hundreds of people who've come into this place on a Saturday. To Dan, the band, the collectors who spent hours out on the streets and in Tesco, Carolyn, to Julie and Ruth for the time, particularly this week, you've uh, spent making sure everything adds up and to Ruth. Someone said 700 Christmas cards you've sorted through for everyone, so thank you for that. To everyone involved in distributing hot lunches on Christmas Day, particularly Gillian and Jill. To everyone who's contributed toys for Scratch, who had over 1,000 local families refer to them this year and supplied gifts for nearly 2,800 local children. And to everyone, for the way, as Stephen has said about a special time we've had over recent weeks, for the way that you've engaged and have participated in our gathered worship during this special time. Thank you. And for those of us that were here last Sunday morning, or Christmas Day morning, we thought about saying thank you in our time together then as well. Thank you for the gifts that we received. But one thing that no one mentioned was toiletries. I don't know about you, but I rely on the toiletries I get given <laughs> at Christmas. I think, I think there was one year when I went an entire 12 months without needing to buy any shower gel because of everything that I received. And this year, I received these. And Victoria said that I was given the wash bag, mainly so that I had a wash bag for my toiletries when I go away. And when she gave me this, she said, well, that's a big one, that should last you a while. Although, I don't expect it to last me until next Christmas. <laughs> yeah, good. And you'll all be glad of that. But what I like about these Raydox shower gels are the way that they sell themselves. And so this bottle says on it, 
fill or wank. And, <laughs> and depending on how you spent New Year's Eve last night, maybe you could do with a bit of help feeling awake this morning. I've had a few people say to me that uh, they were at different places and they didn't get back until the very early hours or that they had barely any sleep. So maybe uh, rather than calling you out, if I see you beginning to doze, I'll just nod this. <laughs> but, I mean, this probably says something about me, but I've got a little collection of shower gels from last Christmas that I've not used because I thought, I'm sure I'll get those into a meeting somewhere. And so this morning, the morning, because I've got a whole collection of these grey dots bottles that make all of these promises Bottles that say they'll help us feel refreshed. One that says it will help us feel ready. One that says it will help us feel revived. One with lots of lavender by the looks of it that says it will help us feel relaxed. One that says it will help us feel active. I'm dropping stuff now. And then this one got me in trouble because we went shopping yesterday when we got home from family. And uh, Victoria said, we didn't buy any shower gel. And I went, oh no, I saw one I didn't have. So this one says about feeling uplifted. <laughs> they make all these promises. But as we've come into worship this morning, uh, and as we've welcomed a new calendar year, I wonder how we're feeling as we've come into this place. And what it is we've come into this place looking for and needing today. Do we need God's touch on our lives to help us feel more active and ready for everything that he's got in store for us today and in the weeks and months and year ahead? Are we feeling tired and lackluster and so need to refresh ourselves and be revived in who God is and who he's made us to be? At the start of this new year, are we feeling anxious or a bit down? And so do we need something that's going to calm our fears and help us feel uplifted? However we've come into this place today, we're going to start our worship by focusing on who God is in the words of Psalm number 133, and the song that you can follow in that way, and the words will be on the screen. Words that were requested during Advent, but that we haven't got round to singing yet, but more importantly, words that echo the prophet Isaiah, words that remind us and encourage us of all that we're able to find in God today and in the days ahead. His presence with us, his peace, his power, and his provision. And so we're going to sing these words together and then we're going to allow these words to lead us into a time of prayer and you read.
that melody, continue playing that melody through and hopefully nearby you there are some sticky labels and pens or there's some labels and pens at the front and as Rian continues to play, I invite you to pray, to so recognise how you're feeling today, to so recognise how you feel about the year that's gone and how you're feeling about the year that's to come and to ask God to meet you as you are, as you reflect on those things. But then also to be open in your prayers so that we might hear and sense and see how God's responding to us and responding to our prayers today. And so if it would help you as we pray, maybe you want to write your prayers on the sticky label, something of what you're looking for or need as we come into worship today, whether that's readiness for what God's got in store, whether that's alertness to hear what he is he saying to us, whether there's things that make you feel anxious, whether it's the energy to get through our time and get your attention to him, whatever it is, to write on your sticky label something of what you're looking for or need in worship today. And then as the music plays and as we make our prayers to come forward and you'll see we've got these two bottles that I've washed and uh, cleaned. And so if you want to respond by coming forward and sticking your labels onto the bottles at the front, the labels are quite big. So if they need to stick over somebody else's, don't worry too much about it. But there's the invitation to respond in that way as we continue in prayer together just now.
ourselves, however we pray. We thank you when that you hear us pray when we speak our prayers aloud. We thank you that you hear us when we pray when we offer those silent prayers of our hearts. We thank you that you hear us pray when we're writing those prayers on sticky labels and sticking them to empty shower gel bottles. But Lord God, in the way that people have responded and in some of the prayers that I've seen being stuck to these bottles, I thank you for the heartfelt way that people have responded today and those earnest prayers for the year that's to come, for worship today, and for all that you have in store for your people. But Lord, we don't know what the day ahead of us has in store for us, let alone the year ahead of us. And there will be things that we're looking forward to that excite us. There will be things that make us feel anxious. There will be things that we're prepared for and there will be things that we couldn't imagine when we look back this time next year. There will be experiences of you where we've learned more of you and who you are and more of who you made us to be. The words we've prayed together just now, we recognise how it is we are feeling individually. We recognise all of our hopes and fears for the years to come. And we pray that as we've presented how we are to you today, that we'd be ready for how it is you're responding to us and what it is that you're wanting to bless us with today. Whether that's adventure, energy, peace, good health, some of the different things I've seen being stuck down as we pray together. And so, Lord, those prayers that we make for the year ahead, we also echo for our time together today. That we'd be ready and responsive to all that you have in store for us. And Lord God, as we think about the prayers that we've offered during this time, we gather them all together now in the words that Jesus taught us to say. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us as this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from the evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen.
religion and the different specials that have been on. I think there was a Britain's Got Talent special that was uh, trying to find the ultimate magician. But Victoria and I only turned on in time for the results and it didn't really seem worth watching and we missed all the acts. But that was a clip from Britain's Got Talent in 2013 of the Hungarian Shadow Theatre Company attraction. I don't know if anyone remembers seeing that at the time. Victoria and I showed her that clip in the week and said, and why are you watching that? And I must say, I, that got me this morning because I'm obviously tired. Uh, that's what I'm going to blame it on. And now I'm thinking now, uh, and why did I choose that? But hopefully that will come to The reason we've watched that is because as we've sung about the wonderful counsellor, mighty God, everlasting Father, and Prince of Peace among us in our opening song this morning, and as we reflect on the year that's gone and prepare for the year that's to come, I want us to recognise the light and shadow that we find in the world around us, the light and shadow that inspired Chippewa's words that we've sung together. And as the dance has reminded us, the light and shadow that we find, not just in the world around us, but in our everyday living, the light and shadow that we've seen and experienced over the last 12 months, the light and shadow that the next 12 months has in school. As Stephen said, it's lovely to have some of my family here with us today, and my mum is going to come and read those verses from Isaiah that inspired Shikyu's words <coughs> to us just now. Prepare a throne and every voice 
a song. As you can see on the screen, it's song number 107 in the song that you've been following that by heart, the glad sounds. And the band are going to help us as we sing, and I invite you to stand. Thank you, Brian. <laughs>
prayer over us just now. As they offered gifts most rare, past that made to rude and fair, so may we with holy joy, pure and free from sins and all, all our costliest <coughs> treasures bring Christ to thee, our heavenly King. Amen. We'll sing, please, my the fourth heaven to the fifth verse. Thank you. <coughs> Father of Boaz, who was the mother of Rahab, 
Boaz, the father of Obed, whose mother was Ruth, Obed, the father of Jesse, and Jesse, the father of King David. David was the father of Solomon, whose mother had been Uriah's wife. Solomon, the father of Rehoboam, Rehoboam, the father of Elijah, Elijah, the father of Asa, Asa, the father of Jehoshaphat, Jehoshaphat, the father of Jehoram, Jehoram, the father of Uzziah, Uzziah, the father of Jotham. What? <laughs> I haven't been heckled mid-Bible. <laughs> I'm used to heckling, but this is the Bible, Jim. <laughs> and now I've lost my place, I've got to start again. <laughs> no. <laughs> Where have we got to? <laughs> Jehovah, the father of Uzziah. Uzziah, the father of Jotham. Jotham, the father of Ahaz. Ahaz, the father of Hezekiah. Hezekiah, the father of Manasseh. Manasseh, the father of Amon. Amon, the father of Josiah. Josiah, the father of Jeconiah and his brothers at the time of the exile to Babylon. Lastly, after the exile to Babylon, Jeconiah was the father of Shealtiel. I just practiced that one as well, but I've still got it wrong. I should have just played the recording of what's his name, David Suchet, reading it. He does a far better job. That same person, the father of Jerubbabel, Zerubbabel, the father of Abihud, Abihud, the father of Eliakim, Eliakim, the father of Azor, Azor, the father of Zadok, Zadok, the father of Akim, Akim, the father of Eliahud, Eliahud, the father of Eliezer, Eliezer, the father of Mathan, Mathan, the father of Jacob, and Jacob, the father of Joseph, the husband of Mary, and Mary, who was the mother of Jesus, who is called the Messiah, Way we're there. <laughs> Thus, there were 14 generations in all from Abraham to David, 14 from David to the exile to Babylon, and 14 from the exile to the Messiah. Linda, I can just imagine what the ladies in your little group on the Wednesday are going to say about that Bible reading the next time you all get together. Well, believe it or not, there's so much that could be said about those verses. The significance of numbers, so many stories that we could tell as well. The significance of women in those stories and so on and so on and so on. But I had a hard enough job reading it so I won't worry about trying to go into all of that. But for us today, as we've maybe recognised some of the names of the genealogy we've just heard or read on the screen, we recognise the light and the shadow in the lives and experience of those people from who Jesus came to who Jesus was promised. But also as we thought about waiting throughout Advent, in the words of William Barclay, we recognise through those verses that the Jews were awaiting people. They recognised, they remembered, they held on to where they'd come from. They recognised the promise over them in the present and they held on to the promise that was for them in what was to come. And as has been alluded to throughout our time together, as Julie has prayed in her prayer, this new year is an opportunity for us to recognise where we've come from, especially what God has done over the last year, to remember the promises that God continues to speak over us in the present and to hold on to his promises for what's to come. But we don't think we won't be thinking too much more about those verses, but we will be thinking about them and our earlier reading a bit more in a moment. But now we look forward to the message from the band. Thank you.
reading is in that way, and as we come now to continue considering what it is God might be saying to us today through our worship today, would somebody just pray as we come to consider his words? Well, we started our time together today by looking at some of the toiletries that I've been given for Christmas this year and last year as well, as well as some that I'm seemingly collecting along the way. Um, we'll use a few more of the gifts that I've been given to help us in our thinking today. But we'll be using those presents to help us think about and to hopefully remember three questions. How do we see God? How do we see ourselves? And how does the way that we see God and see ourselves inform our relationships or impact our relationship with him? I think there are three useful questions for us to reflect on at the start of a new year and to help ground us as we look ahead. And so the first presents I want to show you are these three books. And I think I might have said before during Advent that in the past I've tended to ask for a new Bible every Christmas. And uh, this year Kath got in there early with giving me a new Bible. So these are books to help me in how I read the Bible. And these three in particular are there to help me in my own devotional times. This year, Teddy, who's not very well today, but Teddy's had a bit more of an idea what's been going on this Christmas, and I know I'm biased, but I think he's been a really good boy. He, he's given people their presents when we've asked him to hand out gifts without attempting to open them himself. And when he's opened his own presents, he's taken the time to really look at what he's been given, although that was a bit of a problem on Christmas Day morning because we were hoping we'd close through so that we could get here on time. But when I read, see this book in particular, Yes I Am by Richard Raw, like Teddy, and not because I was with my in-laws, I took the time to start looking at it and really taking an interest in it. And as I did so, I came across this quote. Your image of God creates you or defeats you. The way that we see God either makes us or breaks us. And so I want these three little books to remind us of that first question you can see on the screen there. How do we, how do I see God? I can remember hearing a sermon a long time ago when the preacher challenged those listening not to leave Jesus in the manger. <coughs> Maybe it was a carol service and an invitation to those who don't normally attend to remember that Jesus isn't just the baby in a manger who we think about once a year during church carol services or Christmas nativities, but he's someone who came so that we can live our lives aware of God's presence with us, growing and flourishing in relationship with him as we put our faith in him. For us today, I suppose we could say that Christmas isn't just a nice story from the past, but something that ought to change and challenge the way that we live in the present, because through it we have revealed to us God's promise for the future. But in the same book, a few pages on from that quote I just read, it also says that God is not Santa Claus. For all of the pictures we might see of God where he's depicted as an old man with a long white beard, he's not to be confused 
with Father Christmas. And as obvious as that sounds, how often do we find ourselves thinking that if we do the right things, we'll end up on God's nice list and get everything that we want? Instead, we recognise that the world around us is broken and that with or without God, we're not going to get everything we want in this life. And so instead, Richard Raw encourages us, Richard Raw encourages us to seek authentic experiences of God in the light and the shadows of our different experiences. And what do we discover in those authentic experiences of God? Well, that's where our readings come in today. Because we discover in those authentic experiences of God, God's presence with us for whatever we're experiencing. We discover his peace and his provision and his power for whatever we're facing. And as we thought about through Matthew's genealogy, we discover in those authentic experiences the person that, whether we know it or not, whether we've known it or not, whether we like to admit it or not, we discover the person that we've always been waiting for and who is the answer to everything that we need. William Barclay, in his commentary on Matthew's genealogy, another one of those Christmas gifts, describes Jesus as the realisation of people's dreams. And maybe for those of us that have been here, we can allow our minds to wander to all of our thinking about dreams in the first couple of months after I arrived. I don't talk about dreams and realising our dreams to undermine what I've just said about God and Father Christmas because our dreaming isn't grounded in what we want, but in what God has promised and in what God is already doing. And if we want to fully realise the dreams that God is stirring up in us for ourselves, for this place, for this community, and for his kingdom, then it's in our authentic experiences of him that we'll realise those dreams, whatever they look like. So, as we've come into 2023, how do we see God's? And how will we seek authentic experiences of him that will help shape what life looks like in the year ahead? Before I move on to our next presence and uh, the second question on the screen, there one last quote from Richard Raw because he writes, there is an absolute connection between how we see God and how we see ourselves. The more we look at God, the more we discover of him, the more we discover of ourselves. And so, how do we see ourselves? For Christmas, I asked for a couple of tops, these very nice tops from the Brighton and Hoboken shop. <laughs> There's two of them. There you go. Just because I know you appreciate seeing, particularly those people over there, see some ticket holders. <laughs> What does that say? Don't mention Boxing Day. <laughs> well, better not mention that then. <laughs> when I was asking for these tops, I purposefully asked for them in a bigger size, hoping that unlike the majority of my wardrobe, they'd afford me a little more room and fit a bit more comfortably. But as I've worn both these tops, I've discovered that rather than being loose, they're just the right size. <laughs> I obviously see myself as being thinner than I actually am. And although that's not what I'm really talking about, as I ask us to think about how we see ourselves, it might be how many of us first respond to the question. If I were to hold this mirror up to you this morning, I wonder what you'd see. I wonder if you'd focus on the perceived imperfections in the way that you look. I think I saw somebody just mouth to the person next to them that they'd see how fat they've got or something like that. 
But is that what we see? When we see those things in our lives that aren't quite right or the way they should be, would we see guilt? And maybe we feel a bit condemned about those things. Or, as we look in the mirror, do we see someone who God loves so much that he doesn't want to exist without us? Do you see someone who God loves so much that he doesn't want to exist without you? A fortnight ago in the devotions I'm using, well, I was using up until yesterday, my family thought it was very rude as we had 15 minutes to midnight. I thought, I've done my devotions. So I start, and started reading in the corner. But there you go. But in the devotions I was using up until last night, John Stott wrote, No sooner had Adam and Eve sinned than God announced his intention to save sinners and to do so through a descendant of the very person by whom sin had entered the world. That's the person that the people who Isaiah prophesied to and to whom Jesus was born to were waiting for. And it tells us today that we're worth more than we could possibly imagine to our heavenly Father. For some reason the words of amazing grace just came to light that saved a wretch like me. <coughs> And so I wonder what answers, or what our answers would be, if I held up a mirror to you and asked you to tell me how your Heavenly Father sees you, and what would be different from how you see yourself. I encourage you this week to look at yourself and to see yourself as your Heavenly Father sees you, which we discover through His Word. So if you're not a fan of mirrors, you can look into your Bibles instead. And lastly, on to that third question. How does the way that we see God and the way that we see ourselves shape our relationship with God? For those who were here last week or were watching online, you'll have already seen me show off this gift. And it's another one that will make the Southampton fans grow. Steve Jones wouldn't read out the words last week to me, but uh, I don't know if someone could see that. It says, shh. I'm watching Brighton with Daddy. <laughs> and whether we like the football team or not, it tells us something about the relationship between me and Teddy. In fact, I could have worn a top last night that says, Shh, I'm watching football with my Daddy. And that would have told you something about me and my dad too. We're going to be thinking a bit more about our relationship with God next week when it's Covenant Sunday, the Salvation Army's Covenant Sunday. But today, as we think about our relationship with God, I want us to reflect on what we see when we look at Him and to be changed in how we might, as many as prayed and as came up in Stephen's prayer before we came into the meeting, how we might grow in his likeness so that we, our loved ones and those we come into contact with, recognise more of God in us as we grow in relationship with him. And so, at the start of a new week, a new month and a new year, I encourage you this week to spend time thinking about how you see God and how you're going to seek authentic experiences of Him. If you don't already, I encourage you to think about what resources you're using to engage with Him every day and what you're discovering about God through them. I also encourage you to engage with the things that you think about yourself, to think about the things you think about yourself and to ask yourself how do I see myself and why and how can I invest in things that will make me more aware of just how much I'm worth. And lastly I encourage you as we spend time just quickly thinking about how we see God and how we see ourselves and how that impacts our relationship with him to take a moment for different ways 
we see ourselves growing in his likeness. Maybe that would be a helpful activity as you look back over the last 12 months to think about those occasions when you can say, oh yeah, I wouldn't have acted like that or I wouldn't have reacted like that a year ago. We're going to take a moment for us individually to reflect on those questions and to respond. And to help us, we're going to turn to Psalm number 165. And that we came helpless babe, but it's a song that reminds us that that helpless babe is our God, the servant king. It's a song that helps us think about who we see in Jesus and how he didn't come and just slay a baby in a manger. But he reveals to us so much more of who God is. But there are also words that help us as we think about our response. So let us, the third or the fourth verse says, so let us learn how to serve. In the context of the song and in the context of what we've been thinking about today, so let us learn how to look and be more like him, bringing arms as a daily offering of worship to the servant king. And if you'd like to offer your life as a daily offering at the start of this day, week, month, year, this place of prayer is available for us, where we can recognise God's presence with us and respond to what it is he's saying. <coughs>
walked around our worship today, we've made time to stop and to look back. We thought about looking forward as well, thinking about what the next 12 months will hold. Those words that we've just shared together boil it down to a daily thing, a daily offering of ourselves. Back to you to be the person that you've made us to be. We thank you for your grace and blood that gives us the opportunity to come to you and to be used by you and to discover through you more of who we are. Lord, we spent our events thinking about how we ought not to wish our time away and how we ought to take the opportunity to be present in the moment and not miss out on how it is you're breaking into the world around us. Both as we look where we come from and as we look forward to what it is you have in store for us. And so the God as we look forward, as we prepare for what you have in store. Don't let us become so distracted by what's to come that we miss out on what you're doing now. And Lord God, we pray that in these moments, in the now, we might discover more of who you are. That our vision and knowledge of who you are, our experience of who you are, will become broader and greater that you wouldn't be someone that we we think, oh, when we do this, we get that. But that through our relationship with you, we'd have more and more authentic experiences of who you are and discover more of who you are through those times. We pray that as we discover more of who you are, we discover more of who we are and who you've made us to be. And we pray, Lord God, that our relationship with you, as we put our faith in you, by grace, would be a relationship where we flourish and experience more and more of your goodness to us. And so, Lord God, we present ourselves at the start of this new year. We present ourselves to you today. Not in however many months' time, not when this happens, not when you do that. But we present ourselves to you today. And we ask that we be responsive to what it is you're doing in us and through us and for us. In the rest of today, the week, the month, and the year that's to come. In Jesus' name. Amen. Well, our closing song this morning is song number 261. If you're following the song, but the words will be on the screen. And it might not be a song that we normally associate with this time of year. But it's a song that really captures the shadow and light of the world around us as we've thought about during our time together today. It's a song that helps us think about Jesus, who is the light of all mankind, the light that shines in the darkness, and who the darkness cannot overcome. Those Christmassy words, or those words we associate with Christmas at least, that come from John's Gospel, and maybe someone needs to hear just that today. Jesus is the light who the darkness, those shadows, cannot overcome. Whatever that might mean for you today, or whatever it might be, that you're looking forward to, maybe not with a great deal of enjoyment. But it's also a song that talks about our response of coming into God's awesome presence from the shadows into his radiance, and how as we do so, we grow in his light. This ever-changing from glory to glory, mirrors here our lives, telling his story. And so the band are going to help us, and we'll stand to sing. Oh <laughs>
pray these words for the rest of our day, the rest of our week, and maybe words that we want to take with us as we discover all that God has in store for us in 2023. So let's pray. To be like Jesus, this hope possesses me. In every thought and deed, this is my aim and my creed. To be like Jesus, 